How's it going, everybody? You are listening or watching a brand new episode of On Air with JT. Like always, my name is Justin Thomas, but you can call me JT. I'm here with my co-host, Madeline Haley Marquez and David Chin. What's up, guys? What's up, JT? What's up, bro? What up? What it do? Not much. Good. <laughs> I guess we should. What? What's up? I guess we should also say what's up, everybody. Yeah, yeah. what's up, everybody? What up, everybody that's uh, been supporting us and showing love? Like, I still can't get over it, man. It just uh, the love and support that we're getting is. It's a great feeling, you know, like I said before, like I would do this podcast even if no one listened. I mean, that's how it was when I started off in 2010 when I was 16. But, you know, because I love it so much. But just the fact that people take, you know, time out of their day, like I've said on previous podcasts and whether they listen to the full episode, half an episode, a minute, they watch the reels, clips, whatever, like that means so much to me, I know it means so much to you guys. Like, it's just amazing. Yeah, I can't imagine how it must feel, you know, for you. Because, like, I, I get, like, half of the, uh, like, likes and, you know, shares and stuff like that than you do. Or maybe even less than half. And I still get so excited when when I have, like, you know, the, the little wins. So, you must be so like overwhelmed and and like just proud of yourself because I know I would be. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, like I've said also before in previous podcasts, you know, I'm really hard on myself, so you know, I don't like to be content or complacent. But like, yes, I'm proud of myself and what's going on, but I know I can do better. I know I'm not even close to where I'm gonna be, and, and even though that. I've been podcasting since 2010. This is just the start, literally. And I know that sounds so ironic and hypocritical because it's like 13 years in, but, you know, I, I just have a new, I don't, I don't want to say passion because I've always had passion for podcasting over the years. That's never died. I would just say I'm just determined, more motivated than ever to make it work. Well, I, I mean, it, it might be something to do with like your age and uh, you seeing everyone else's success within their own means, like with their lives, like not success in the industry, but just like, I guess people you grew up with seeing them like do what they're doing for their life and get, you know, almost turning 30 and well, stuff for, like that. Uh, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. I don't mean to cut you off, but, not to sound too conceited, but I mean, most people that I went to high school with, I'm still doing better than them. And I didn't even go to college. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's for sure. You know, there's a lot of people that thought they were hot shit and now they're like just losers. <laughs> but, you know, I guess it's all how you, how, what you see as a loser. You know, I see someone as a loser if they just like are good with, with staying where they're at. Like, like you said, you don't like to stay complacent. A loser, a loser is someone with a shitty ass mindset. That is what a loser is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like if, if, and then you reflect that onto other people that, that too, you know, like, but if you, well, that's I don't know. Because they're insecure. Yeah. That, that's definitely the definition of loser. Loser. <laughs> With the shape of an L on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. Yeah, you know, right. It's yeah. so crazy that I got to interview Smash Mouth. I mean, like, that just, I mean, just all star. I mean, like. Everyone knows that song, and especially when it went, to, you know, it was in Shrek. I mean, that just blew the fuck up. Yeah, I, I can't believe I was in the store shopping. I'm like looking at my phone. I'm scrolling past the post that you made about about, you know, Smash Mouth. And then I'm, I'm and then the song comes on and I'm like, what the f like, how did that happen? And I mean, I know it's a very common song to hear. You know, you know why? Just because, like, I don't know. I'll tell you why. Because it's a good song. Because somebody once told me. <laughs> Shit. 
I knew it was going to be ridiculous. I didn't know on what level, but. <laughs> oh, man. Bad. So, yeah, this is, I believe, like the 54th or 55th episode of season 14. That's crazy. And we're just like in the beginning of February. So if we stay at this consistency, um, we're probably, I'm, I think I'm, I'm predicting that I'm going to do at least 300 shows and that's kind of being conservative with the numbers. It'll probably be much more. I mean, cause my goal is to have at least a minimum of a hundred interviews. And I mean, we're already like what, 15% there. Uh, so and then with the other upcoming interviews, we'll be at like 25%. So, you know, I think it's, I think it's doable. Um, but it is funny, you know, I had someone ask me the other day, you know, how many, JT, how many podcast episodes you think you've done since the start? And that's honestly a hard question to answer because first of all, all, all of the episodes except like maybe like two or three are all deleted. They weren't archived from 2010 to 2020. Um, and when I started in 2010, I, I had a big, you know, my initial run was from 2010 to 2012. And I was doing really big things because still, like, podcasting wasn't even close to its peak. I mean, like I said before, there was a time where I was getting more numbers than Joe Rogan. And now he's the, you know, the biggest podcaster in the fucking world. Um, but I know from 2010 to 2012, I was just banging out episodes after high school, after I got home from high school every day, you know, one to two shows a day. So if I had to guess from 2010 to 2012, I did at least 450, 500 shows. And then that's minimum. And then just, you know, from the hiatuses and, you know, comebacks, you know, since from 2012 to 2020, you know, maybe I did like 15 or 20 episodes, which is really low for that many years. Um, then I came back in 2020, we relaunched the show, um, did that for about a year, a little less than a year and a half. Then I took another hiatus for like almost a year. And then came back in October of last year. And since October of 2022, we've done about almost 100 episodes. Wow. That's, I mean, that's such a, it's so crazy, like, how you go from doing maybe 10 to 15 in the, in a in a long span, and then you do, like, yeah, you know. I did like 10 to 15 episodes in an eight-year span, and then I did 100 episodes in a matter of like two, three months. You're just making up. You're just trying to make up for what you didn't do. Like that. <laughs> I guess so. I guess, I guess some way it's overcompensating, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, but, I mean, I guess just the point of, to what I am you know also want to say is that, you know, again, like I reiterate so many times on this show, and I'm very open and vocal about it, is that, you need to learn from your mistakes and failures and things like that. Like, and I don't want to sound bitter at all because I'm not, but like, I know that if I would have stayed consistent from age 16 in 2010 until now, this show would even be, you know, on a way different level to say the least. Um, but obviously, you know, I was going through some mental health issues and some personal shit. So, you know, I took so many hiatuses and I just wasn't able to be consistent. So, you know, that is a lesson that I learned, um, whether it, whether you want to, you know, say, oh no, it, you know, you were sick or you're dealing with shit, you know, mental health issues and, you know, all that, like as an excuse. I mean, yeah, maybe you, you, you know, you can use that as an excuse, but you know, to me, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant because I still fucked up. Um, but I learned my lesson and now, like I've said before, I mean, just, just within the past couple of months, we've achieved way more numbers, interviews, every, everything. 
you know, in terms of analytics and, you know, numbers in, in two, two months than I did in 13 years. Um, so that goes to show you that, you know, if you really reflect and understand your failures and be a little bit analytical and understand, okay, maybe I shouldn't have done this, or maybe I should have done this. Should I should have went about this that way, vice versa. You know, you gain insight, you gain knowledge from your failures and your mistakes. And obviously, you know, I gained a lot of insight and knowledge and I came back and the numbers and, and the results kind of speak for themselves. Um, you know, sometimes you do have to experience those failures, those major fuck ups, you know, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, like, you know, very smart, you know, marketing dude, entrepreneur, businessman, social media influencer, you know, huge fan. I know it was crazy. Another person that like I started like following before he really blew up on the internet. And, you know, even he says, you know, that, you, you really can't, you got to understand like your failures and, and, and you got to understand, you know, where, where you went wrong. Because if you can understand where you went wrong and you can properly, you know, be analytical and really go in depth and understand maybe, you know, try and think of the, the opposite thing to do obviously, or just a different route, a different road, then you'll achieve, you have a higher probability of, you know, achieving something, um, no matter how many times you fuck up, because even if you fuck up, you know, a thousand times, that's a thousand times that you learned, hey, I shouldn't do it this way. So every time you fuck up, every time you mess up, you can actually learn a lot. And a lot of people get so you know, what's the right word? I, I don't want to say like, you know, down on themselves or hard on themselves. But some people get into this mindset where, you know, they, they fuck up, they have a failure, they mess up, and they don't go back and they don't they don't get up, they don't get up, they fall on the ground, and, and they just lay in a fetal position you know, hoping and praying that, you know, someone's going to pick them up. And you got to understand wh when you fail and when you fuck up in life, you have to get up. You know, fall down seven times, get back up eight. And it's not always easy to get up. You know, and, and there's a lot of times where we might even want to throw in the towel. And there's been times where I, I've you know, wanted to, obviously wanted to do that and literally did throw in the towel. But when you, do, you know, even if you throw the throw in the towel, you know, you have to like reflect for a second. And even with all that emotion and, and whatever you're feeling, you got to look back, you know, wherever that towel is on the floor, the ground, wherever, and look at it. And really ask your, yourself, your heart, your soul, who you are, why am I doing this? Why? Because if you want it bad enough, you're going to go back over and you're going to pick up that towel, even if you threw it. Because it's okay sometimes in life when you do fuck up and you fail and, you know, they say never give up. You know, people give up all the time, and that's okay as long as, you know, so you, you don't give up forever. You know, it's okay to maybe take a break or a hiatus or, you know, get some space or time to redeem yourself and get back into your normal, you know, character or whatever it might be. But as long as you pick up that, you know, towel and, and you get back up from the ground, and you keep pushing and striving, then that's all that matters. I know I just went really deep on you guys, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, man. That was some deep shit. But it's, yeah. it's the truth. It's the truth. Yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, fall down two times, get up three, or something like that. Fall, was it? fall down How? seven, get up eight. Oh, yeah, 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 that's a, that's a good saying. It's definitely. You know, I've made a lot of mistakes being around people that I shouldn't be around. And, and. We all they, do. We all do. Yeah, yeah, but obviously, like, bad things that happen from being around those people, you know what I'm saying? And then when you finally cut those people off, it's just everything gets better. I mean, sometimes, I mean, sometimes you really got to just let people go. And people are going to be whoever they are and just stay true to you. And then because you know who you really are. And that's it. I mean, exactly. I've, 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 I've had to get rid of talk to people in my life in the last couple of years. Um, we all do. Yeah. It, it's yeah. essential. If you, family if, members, if you family were, family yeah, even blood, even blood. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's a sad thing when you have to do that. Or even, even when it's not even blood, you know, obviously when it's blood, that's, you know, a whole different thing. But <laughs> even with people that you never thought you would have to cut ties with, you know, it's not an, you know, easy thing to do if you care about someone or if you love someone, whether that's, you know, romantically or friendship or whatever it might be family like it doesn't you know it doesn't matter it's not always it's not always an easy thing to do you know for some people it's easier because they've just had to do it so much they get accustomed to it you know it becomes second nature but it's not always an easy thing to do is to cut off you know toxic people but it's essential overall yeah another thing that i want to say is like people that that have je a, a lot of jealousy and envy in their hearts that that just want to see you destroyed, like screw you, honestly. Like there's, you know, some stuff that happened within the last year or two that, you know, a certain somebody I'm not gonna say any names, you know, try to try to ruin my 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 relationship with my my fiance, and not not even a family member. You know what I'm saying? Maybe maybe close to, relative to my my daughter, but you, you're you're a hater. You, you like to you like to try to be a troll and get on, underneath people's skin. He knew you. you know had a girl? You're angry because I'm strong. I'm a stronger person than he is. He's mad that he's not even half the man that I am. He's mad. Very angry. Oh, I know. What you're very about. angry. Uh, envious. Very yeah. envious. I, I've yeah. talked. About that, that, I've that's talked. A, that's a problem, dude. I mean, that, I've yeah. said it so many times. The envy is so fucking real and a lot of people you know obviously they you know it's, people say it all the time and you know some people might not fully get it but once you start doing things in life once you start accomplishing things you know making progress having a buzz you know fulfilling your goals your dreams your destiny your purpose the envy is real, you know, people, you know, even people, and I've experienced this firsthand, you know, people that you think are your, you know, really good friends, best friends, like brothers, quote unquote, you know, you know, are en can be envy of you and, and they, and they're, they're good actors, you know, for some, sometimes, you know, for some people, you know. But that goes to a you know a whole nother level of just like you know narcissism and being manipulative. But right, um, yeah, it's it's wild. Another thing that that you and I can relate on is like, you know, a lot of my life when I was a younger kid, I was a little bit different than everybody else. And you know, just because I'm different than other people and I have mental problems doesn't make me less of a person. You know what I'm saying? There's people that that been I I mean it, it took me a while for some amount of years. There's some people that that just been around me just to just to get at me in a certain type of way and feel like I'm I'm some kind of weak target and try to take advantage of me and yeah, talk. I've I've experienced that in my you life as well. Been, we've all been through that. Yeah. So to those people that did that and then to be fake behind my back, it's 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 pretty crazy.
I mean, it's, it's, it's expected. And what, what's, I'm, I'm, what's I'm very, ironic, I don't mean to cut you off, David, but what's <laughs> ironic is, you know, I experienced some of this in high school. And mm -hmm. it's funny, you know, obviously, you know, well, I graduated in 2012, so like 11, you know, 10, 11 years later, you know, me personally, I'll get messages from people that, you know, used to like bully me or like make fun of me for podcasting or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, come back and be like, yo, what's up, man? Or like, uh, yo, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I was a dick to you. Like, I, you know, now I have mental health issues. And it's crazy how some people can grow and, and change you know, because because we all change, we all grow. It's just a matter of whether we're growing and changing in the right direction or not. That's the question. Right. Um, so, JT, Doctor Phil. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> um, I was I was trying to say it's it's hard for people to. Uh, to see what's, you know, what's really going on in, in certain situations, you know, until it's too late. Um, and like, you know, bullies are definitely uh, able to change, um, you know, later on in life. And people might have felt, felt bad, you know what I mean? And reached out because they might have felt bad for how they treated you or, you know, whoever, uh, that they're trying to apologize to because, um, you know, I can't say that I've never bullied anybody. Like, I feel like that would be like, I feel like a lot of people have bullied people in, in some type well, of well, the majority of people that do bully people, even if they don't mean it, were bullied themselves. Right. So, like, it was a, so I mean, I, even I can admit there were times when I was much younger where I've been a sort of a bully not like crazy but like just like an asshole yeah i was never i was never a bully and that, that was never really bullied like that i mean maybe picked on a little bit but not actually full-on bullied like how people some like some people got stories of like the one bully that like yeah because you look like you have a fucking black belt <laughs> I'm just kidding. you look like you got like a like a pink belt I had I had one dude that that used to bother me, but then it wasn't really like that. Like it just wasn't like how how it'd be in the movies where you didn't even get beat up and stuff. I never got beat up or 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 grabbed by the pull some by Steven the third Seagal shit. Yeah, like stuff like that. I ne I've never experienced that type of that type of bullying at all. You know what I mean? But I, I've had people you know pick on me a little bit and stuff to make fun of me. You know, just that goes with me being different. You know what I'm saying? Just because I'm different. Yeah, I'm always gonna be I different. I'm always I'm not gonna be the same as everybody else. Everybody that's likes to okay, be the same. But that that's that's a good thing. We yeah. all are different. And exactly. the, the thing is with society and people, they all want to fit in. You know, there, there's not enough leaders. There's so many fucking followers. Everybody, oh, wants, everybody wants to follow the next trend. What's cool? What's hip? Oh, you gotta check this out. Oh, you gotta do this. Oh, you gotta wear Balenciaga. Like, no. Like, first of all, stop doing that because you look unoriginal. Second yep. of all, you're, it's not creative or, you know, impressive. And third of all, what are you doing? Exactly. You know what I want that's name brand? Like, that's a good, like, brand. Uh, but it's not clothing or you don't wear it unless you get it, you know, unless it's a... Actually, you could wear it, like, a guitar. Um, I really like, like, the Les Paul with, like, a really cool strap. Or I could get one of those, you know, you could wear one of those, like, fucking pianos, you know, the ones that are little. You could get a strap for that. I I I would I really want a fucking Korg electric keyboard. I'm that's the fucking name brands that I give a shit about. Yeah. For real. Nice. And I know on the podcast, you know, a few weeks ago I was talking about, you know, people's priorities on how you know, they want to buy <laughs> David will have a little laugh, you know, people that even that, you know, can't whether they can afford it or not, you know, well, actually, no, let me rephrase that. The people that really can't afford it, but, you know, technically on, you know, paper, you know, they might, but that's besides the, you know, point. Like, 
case. But, you know, people, people's priorities are all fucked up and screwed up. A lot of people. You know, they want to buy that, that, that fucking 3 Series BMW or that, or that C-Class Mercedes, you know. Um, and they want to buy the designer clothes. They want that Dior. They want that Gucci, the Louis. Th- they want, you know, th- you know the, the latest iPhone, whatever. But are, are you investing into a Roth IRA, mutual, mutual funds, index funds, S&P 500, real estate, or just putting money away in savings? I mean, it, it's just crazy people's priorities are so screwed up because of society, because, you know, oh, if people think, you know, you know, because cause you and, you know, David, you and I, we're both car lovers. Like, we want, like, nice cars not to show off. We're not doing it to, like, be like, oh, look, you know, look at me. It's because we actually appreciate the fucking car. But exactly. there's, so, there's so many people out there that are like, oh, I got to get a BMW to look like I, I, I got money. Like, like you're, you're, no one gives a fuck. Like, especially if you're having a fucking $30,000 BMW, I'm sorry. Like, it's not impressive. Like, so don't, don't waste your money. Invest your money. Start a small business. Or if you're not an entrepreneur type, that's fine. If you're more of a nine to five, that's fine. Max out your fucking 401k. Yeah, you're right about that one. You know, people's, you know... And, and I'm guilty of this in, you know, in my early 20s of, of making stupid decisions. Like when I bought the Infiniti G37 XS, like I should not have bought that, uh, that car. I didn't have the money to buy that car. You know, I mean, I, I did it. You know, the fucking car payments were like 400 a month. And the insurance at the beginning was like 650 700 a month. And then, not, then, and, then, and then when I almost got into an accident, well, when I got into an accident and a, a speeding ticket, um, of course I got a speeding ticket in that car. Um, the, they wanted like a little over a thousand. So I had to sell the car because I was like 1500 bucks a month. If I'm, if I'm spending 1500 bucks a month on a car, it might as well be a fucking, you know, Bentley or, you know, you know, S550 or, you know, a Ferrari or some shit like a Rolls Royce, like. It's ridiculous. It's it's stupid decisions, but I feel like we all kind of need to go through those kind of dis- you know situations in life. You know whether it's buying a car that we can't afford that for too much, or you know having too much of a, a, a monthly car payment, or stuff like that. Like we we need to experience those situations and learn our lessons to be able to be smarter when we you know grow and progress and evolve. Yes, sir. But that's, just that's my, that crazy. You were opinion. under, you were under twenty five when the, when, you, when you had that. It made matters worse. But bro, I, I'm I'm twenty nine, and with my driving record, and mind you, I have like a newer Honda, you know, Civic, and I'm still paying like three hundred bucks a month in car insurance. I'm gonna tell you something funny that happened before I, mean, I moved. Cars paid off. I paid that. I just paid that in full. But like, the still. Three hundred bucks a month for car insurance is ridiculous for a Honda Civic. I, yeah, mean, I, know I do live in Boston. I do have, you know, a good amount of speeding tickets. Um, that sucks, man. Yeah. You want to know a story that happened before I moved back up here uh, when I was in Florida? I actually got. I no one knows this, but I, I actually got pulled over by state state trooper one night, and I went fifteen miles over the speed limit, and I I almost shit myself. The crazy part about it is. I didn't even see him because I, I'm tired. It's like 11, 12 o'clock at night. I'm going to Wawa and stuff. And he pulled me over. And I'm like, damn. He pulled me over right when I was pulling in there because I was going 15 over. And he stopped me. He's like, you know you went 15 over speed limit, right? I'm like, yeah, yes, sir. Where, where, where is this? All right. It, it, First of all. Wait, no, hold on. Where, where was this? I, got, I, I just got to say something before you can continue with your story. You know where this was. No, <laughs> you know, it was like in Florida. Yeah, okay. you know exactly uh, where so it was. If, they, if this shit happened in like somewhere in Boston, like the cops wouldn't even fucking chase you. You <laughs> like, know what? Not, not, and maybe some of them, but like, be, like most of them would just be like, because I mean, that's just how we drive. <laughs> like, yeah. If you're not you know driving what, above the speed limit, then you're getting, you know, you're you're getting tailgated. <laughs> 
Facts. So what happened was I actually didn't get it. He didn't give me a ticket at all. He let me go. He seen he seen what I had, what kind of license I had. He just let me go. He's like, not all cops are bad. We're, we're not all of us are bad. And I looked at him. I said, I really, really appreciate that. Genuinely. You know what I'm saying? So, um, was he, yeah. Was well, he white? That, that's yeah, not, he was white too. That's not how it happened. So, you sound like an attorney. It, it's not. Well, so we'll, 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 we'll judge. This is not how it, it happened. So, how did let, it happen? Let me explain. Go ahead. Okay. For, for, for one, it was 20 miles over. And two, uh, that the cop walked up normal. And then David rolled down the window, angry David. And I also with his hands in the, in the air with, with his mannerisms, like what did it, I do? What did I do, man? Not just that, <laughs> but his face obviously was all oh, fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> and I can picture this shit. <laughs> and uh, so he's looking at me, and you know me, I look real sketchy. So that's just yeah. That's, he asked me. Yeah, that so that you, Maddie, know, so you that, look like you just robbed a fucking bank. Listen, I never ever had that in any any discovery of mine. So that never happened ever. So the only thing that happened was I helped the situation, and then he was like, because the cop was like, "Why are you so angry? You were going twenty miles over," and he, and he and then David was like, "Nah, man, I just." I, I just don't like cops or something like that. I swear he said something like that. And then and then I was Classic I looked at him, David. And then I looked at him and I was like, you know what? He's not angry. He's just he he has uh he's not angry. That he's just like that. And I said, I said, we're not we're not mad at you at all. I said, I said, we support some we support police. And I smiled at him. <laughs> and then I, I, went, I support good I, I support me too. Good I support police. good. That's, that's it, though. I have I have family that's police, but not actual family, like not blood related family, because they wouldn't be able to do that. But um, anyway, yeah. So basically, we got off because he was like, "Oh, I think he's seen maybe that David had like a CDLA and he didn't want to fuck it up or something like that." So so that's why he made the comment like, "Not all cops are bad," and and I definitely don't think all cops. Are, I don't think you know. I think that there's you know, a lot of people that benefit from, from, uh, you know, calling police because it just helps them, you know, like if cops come when the ambulance comes. So if someone overdoses, a cop's there sometimes before the ambulance and is able to administer, uh, Narcan or, yeah, or definitely there, there are, there are some great people who actually want to protect and serve their community. Correct. I and believe. Unfortunately, just like with everything else, yep. there's bad, there's good and bad apples. And there are a lot of bad cops. And, you know, like I just said, you know, when people bring up the whole discussion of, you know, so many bad cops, you know, people's go to is, well, that, you know, there's, there's good and bad apples with everything. Well, yes, but not every, you know, not, not all those careers, you know, have have you have access to a gun and authority and lights and sirens and well <laughs> what's, being what's able to you know falsely uh, you know arrest somebody or you know plant evidence or <laughs> whatever it might be you know and and there's an issue because it's a it's a brotherhood so you know you know there I mean I'm not saying that there aren't cops that you know don't speak out you know about shit that goes wrong. That, you know, in the you know police stations or sheriff or whatever, but you know, of course, there's you know shit that goes on, and you know, obviously, it's different now with the whole body cam you know era, because you know, not just for you know entertainment. I watch a lot of like you know videos of you know, you know, like people getting arrested or whatever. Like, so I see like a lot of POV like point of view uh, like body cam. And even to this day, you know, on hundreds of videos I've seen, and I'm not exaggerating, you know, the cops will like signal or like like do something to like let the other cop know, like, yo, the the body cam's on, it's recording. Don't, don't say anything stupid. Yeah. Um, 
It's crazy. It, it's wild. I, there was like, a, there was even a cop in Boston that that just got fired like uh, like a year ago because he was saying yeah, it's automatic. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, just there's there's this fucking reel about this lady in Boston yelling at these cops, and it's so funny because her accent's so thick. Oh yeah, it's funny. That's a funny video. <laughs> like, it, it's funny <laughs> what's going on because they're obviously like so. You what know, are you, uh, that you a cop or something? You fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you oh shit yeah, but, but uh it, it's so funny because there's another thing i wanted to say real quick um there's also another reel about this like nypd police officer and she's like uh nypd is the biggest gang in 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 new york or whatever or in in the world or something like that and it's just so funny because like why the fuck are they acting like they're a gang? Like, I, I, first, I, first of all, they're they're not the big. They would they're not the biggest gang in the world. They would get wiped first out of all, by, by gangs. And they, they would get wiped out by the cartel. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. The cartel wins the big. <laughs> like, I, feel what? Like, I feel like they would get that wiped bi- out. That bitch by... is dumb. That bitch they... is dumb. I told you, I told you years ago that uh, when I was in the corrections academy, which I didn't succeed with the job. Or whatever i just wanted to do something else i met uh i don't know if he's a he was like a, a detective in our training and he uh was from the new england area and i asked him i said yo he's like he's gang unit so i was like so what is the most dangerous uh gang in the united states that you had to deal with and you know what he told me he told me the most dangerous gang in the united states was the aryan brotherhood which is the ku klux klan so yeah that that goes through, that's that's that. That's so we know what the most dangerous that's, technical American in the United States gang is. That's, so that's fucking wild. Yeah, it was the crazy. It my jaw dropped when he told me that. So if you are a business owner, a brand, a company, someone with a product or a service, and you're interested in advertising on this podcast, the Mental Health Awareness Podcast that's launching very soon, an additional podcast that's launching very soon, hosted by me. Also, I'm launching my podcast media network, my online radio station that's going to play all of the shows and content from my media company, whether that's my podcast, the mental health podcast, interviews, other podcast shows that are hosted by other people, whatever it might be. It's going to be all on a website, 24-7 live streaming. It's going to be great. Um, I have the social media marketing agency and management coming back. I'm relaunching. Uh, so if you're interested in advertising on this podcast, send me an email, serious inquiries only at on air with JT at gmail.com. That's on air with JT at gmail.com. Of course, you can watch the full show, the full episode, clips, behind the scenes, exclusive content at our YouTube channel. Just head over to YouTube and type in On Air with JT. If you do have an account, I would greatly appreciate it if you could please subscribe. Um, Obviously, you can listen to this podcast on all major streaming platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and about 15 additional plus more uh, platforms. But I do know that a lot of people that listen to the podcast, they listen on their iPhone with the podcast app, the Apple podcast app, the purple app. And if you do and you are a fan and a supporter and you like what we do and you enjoy the content and the show, if you could do us one big favor, small favor, I would greatly appreciate it. All you got to do, it's going to take 30 seconds. All you got to do is go to the app, the Apple Podcast app, type in On Air with JT, click on the show, scroll down, and you can rate the show one out of five stars. Rate it whatever you'd like. I'm not asking you to rate it a five. If you don't think it's a five, you know, you can leave a comment. Also, if you have any questions or want to get in contact with me or the show, uh, if you're interested in advertising or being a guest, you can always reach out on air with JT at gmail.com um, on social media, Instagram, Justin Thomas, Insta, Instagram on air with JT, YouTube on air with JT, Twitter on air with JT, Facebook on air with JT. Uh, see, there's a little pattern there. Facebook, Justin Thomas, 
TikTok, Justin Thomas, TikTok, Snapchat, Justin Thomas SC. But I mainly use my Instagram, which is Justin Thomas Insta. Um, if And again, uh, I just want to let you guys know, I know it's a lot. So everything that I just mentioned is right over at onairwithjt.com. Maddie and David, where can people follow you and check out your content? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Nismo uh, Chin underscore 23. That is N I S M O C H I N underscore 23. And my Facebook is David Chin. And uh, you can find me on Facebook at Madeline Haley Marquez, uh, M A D A L I N H A L E Y M A R Q U E Z. And on Instagram, I am Madeline. Uh, with two N's, and it's underscore Haley, so M-A-D-A-L-Y-N-N underscore Haley, and my YouTube and TikTok are LazyI16. I make uh, reels and post funny content and also motivational content about my life. I have a four-year-old daughter, David, here is my fiance, if you're, I guess, the first-time listener. Um, yeah, go check me out or go check us out. Definitely. Go give them both a follow. They put out really good content and they're very consistent. And like I said, so many different times, it's not the same shit. It's, you know, a variety of different kinds of, you know, themes and, you know, topics and, and everything. So definitely go give both of them a follow. Uh, David and Maddie, you know, we got to talk about, the, you know, something, you know, cause you know, I'm always just scrolling on, you know, Instagram or Facebook and, you know, I see these, you know, memes and shit about, you know, Eminem destroying MGK's rap career and <laughs> no, es essentially, yes, Eminem did sort of destroy his rap career, but. And then, and then people make, you know, they say and they make fun of him like, oh, he had to switch to genres. But personally, I believe that was actually the best thing that could have happened to him because I feel like he found his real calling, his lane. You know, am I, am I saying he's not a good rapper? No, I'm not saying that. Like, he he's decent. But, you know, this new style is good. I mean, you know... You, you know, Tickets to My Downfall in 2020 is actually a pretty good project. I mean, the last project, um, what was it called? Uh, Mainstream Sellout was, there was like a couple songs on it, but other than that, it was pretty garbage. But um, am, is he the best singer? No. Is he the best rock star? No. But I feel like he's getting a, a little bit more hate than he deserves right now. And not to mention, he did he did pretty well on that, you know, that diss on Eminem. Yeah, I, I think um, he had the best type of diss out of any rapper that could have dissed him. Um, I know he's been, he threw shots at him a couple times over a couple years, but then I, I feel like he said, fuck it, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drop, drop a song on this man. And I give him a, I give him he didn't, he's bold for that. He didn't end up like Benzino. Yeah. He, and, his, and, you know, I've told the story, you know, obviously, if you guys don't know who Benzino is, he's a rapper. He, you know, you probably might know him from reality TV, but he's from Boston. His father is like a, uh, let's just say he's an OG in Boston uh, or was. Um, let's put it like that. Um, so, and if you don't know, you know, Benzino's daughter is Coyle Ray. And he also has a son. He has a couple kids. But um, back, I think back in 2017, um, his son, Chavo, who's a rapper, you can go check him out, uh, he came to the crib, recorded some music, and Koi was supposed to come. And so, like, I, I was aware of her music and shit way before she blew up. And I knew she was going to kind of blow up. But I did not think she was gonna blow up this big, and to and like her music is not that good. But that re, that new that new song that plays whatever, that's it's a, it's, 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 that's a good song. That's a good fucking song. I downloaded that. I bought that shit. That shit is catchy as fuck. 
Yeah. And, 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 and like, I, I, me personally, I don't know why, mm-hmm. but I find her so attractive. Like, and she, and she, and, you know, she, 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 you know, she ain't got no, she ain't got no titties. She ain't got no ass, but like, I'm not trying to body shame. She's, she's beautiful, but like, um, she's, I don't know. She's just, I don't know. Like some people like say she looks like, like an alien and shit, but like, I don't know. There's something about her. I, just, I find her really attractive. Um, first of all, she is beautiful and I feel like she is doing the most awesome thing. Uh, the way that she's making content right now is really, really cool. Um, I, I got a lot of respect for her, but she kind of, I'm not trying to sound funny, but she kind of does look like an alien. Not even, no disrespect to her. She she has a great personality. Oh. She, she has a Violated. dope personality. I, I, I just had to say it. I just... I, oh, I don't, <laughs> don't want to. I'm no, no disrespect. She she looks kind of crazy to me. To yeah, me. I feel like you guys are bullies. And no, I'm no, not. not. I said she's. I just said she's very attractive, and I find her, and she's very beautiful. So I, 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 would, I, I just, I just said she didn't have any like ass. First of all, she, <laughs> she, she, she has a small. She actually has like a like a. It's just not the ass that I usually like prefer, but like. She has a nice, like, tiny, cute ass. But, like, you know, like, I'm not body. I'm not trying to body shame her. I'm just saying, like, that's not usually, like, my type. I mean, even though, like, so Kravitz kind of has, like, a similar build. What so, What about Bia? Yeah, Bia looks good. And she's from in the Boston. Same place. Yeah. I mean, I think she grew up in New York, but she moved to Boston. Yeah. She was very Back young. Bia, forth. Bia. <laughs> There's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. I fucking love her. Yeah, she, she looked good. I don't really give, I don't, she looked good. I don't know who I would pick, Coil or Ray, or or I'd probably be a. <laughs> what about you? What about you, Patty? You know me. I want both. Oh, she's. <laughs> on, um, on air, sound like Drake and Gucci. <laughs> uh, no, but on some real shit. Uh, I just, I just want to like, just make it clear that we all, we all respect women, and of course. We, yeah. we, we, we just are saying how beautiful they are, and and the verbiage might be a little bit harsh, but you know, we just are really passionate about how much we love fucking women, like, and I don't mean oh, fucking. Yeah. Every, everybody's beautiful. I don't you know. have sex with them. I mean, in gen- in general, that we just love, and I was just enunciating the word. In its use uh, and saying fuck, not saying that we love to fuck women. All right, I'm gonna say this: Coyle Ray has a, has a pretty face. That's it. That's it. That's it for me. That's that's simple and plain. Everything else is just I I don't know, man. That's, that's I mean, not me. You know who I think has a really pretty face? Who? Um, Jenna Ortega. Oh, you know, you know who's pretty? Glo- Glorilla. Uh, Glorilla. Uh, She's skinny, but she has, she has a body though. I don't get all the hype. She has a body though. I don't get all the hype. Just like the whole thing about Ice Spice. Uh, I don't care about her. <laughs> Ice Spice. I, that's, that's not. I see. I don't know. All she got she is a fat. On. All she got is a fat ass. I feel like uh, she was forced on us. I feel like Glorilla and Ice Spice equally look good, and I feel like you know, Glo- you know, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but you know who who still looks good to this day. Kelly Rowling. Okay. I don't know if you looked at her, what she looks like recently. I haven't seen her. She looks no. good. She still looks good. I I haven't seen her either, but I'm sure she does. I mean, uh, yeah. I'm, I, uh, who, who, who else do I think looks really good right now? Do you like Carrie Helson? I don't know who that is. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> it, yo, 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 David. David. Yo. Oh, no. What what she say? Uh, oh no! Uh, yeah, not, not not again! <laughs> that should always <laughs> keep rocking. <laughs> that song's funny. Yo, that's oh. actually a, yo Neo, bro. Neo, pe- pe- people like don't give him his flowers. Like Neo is like, bro, bro, bro. No, he don't. Neo, he wrote he wrote songs for Rihanna and yeah, Chris. bro. He he wrote okay. so many. He's like the dream, Crazy. bro. The dream, <laughs> bro. Bro, the, write, the dream. Doesn't think the, to perform yeah, songs, yeah, you bro. Know, it's it's harder. It's harder to write it a, a hit song than I to didn't perform. Say, I'm not 
I'm not discrediting him in, in the aspect of writing music. I'm saying his performance is not there for me. I just don't care. Neo, I uh, just if you're listening, bro, I'm a big so fan. You, so you don't like the song you don't like the song Sexy Love? Neo, Neo, if you're listening, bro, you're sexy and I would still be, and I think anybody would. I'm, I'm just I, I reached out to I reached out to his management, so Yo, that was yo, honestly, <laughs> 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 Yo, honestly though, if you get that interview, I, I all three of us gotta be in that because I'm a big fan, bro. I, too, I got his music on my phone. Him, I'm him, with it. him and Mario. Mario, when Yo. he did the verses, did he the verses, did, 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 did Mario let me love you? Whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, Yo, remember um, get it, shawty, get it, shawty. Oh, oh Lloyd, 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 yeah. Yo. yeah, yeah I love Yo, that, beat, that beat, that beat was crazy. Dun, oh, yeah. Dun. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of females, I I gotta bring this up because I gotta bring this into a real. You know, we, we look nowadays and we we see Pete Davidson, you know, pulling all of these beautiful women, but we don't. You know, a lot of us forget. You know that Eric Andre. Eric Andre. Pulled Rosier, Ros what's her name? Rosia Dawson, like. Like what? <clears throat> and, and he also ha dated um, that the the girl that that Pete Davidson was just with Emily Ratosti, whatever her name is. Like, and look look up what Eric Andre looks like. Oh, I know who he is. No, no, bro, no. It, it, Eric Andre walked so Pete Davidson could run. Eric That's Andre crazy. was with Dawson. And she is fucking beautiful. I, I just watched Seven Pounds again last night just to fucking see her beautiful face. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, so uh, that, that, that leads me to the next question. I don't know if you guys seen the movie Seven Pounds by Will Smith and, and Rosario Dawson, which is a very good movie. But I was trying to think to myself, which is a bet? Well, because my two favorite movies by him is, you know, Pursuit of Happiness and seven pounds I and because they're amazing performances and I'm trying to like figure out which performance was better but I don't know if you guys have seen the movie seven pounds uh, I might have a long time ago I don't really remember yeah it, it's hard because you know he he killed it in seven pounds he killed it in pursuit of happiness they both came out like within a couple of years. Ironically, they both were based and filmed in San Francisco. Um, very weird, uh, but he, he killed both roles. And and just I just want to say one thing that a lot of people don't talk about. You know, a lot of people you know know Adam Sandler as being you know the funny comedian and not not really doing that many like serious roles. So when he came out with the movie Hustle, people were like, holy shit, like. You know, he, he can actually, like, act, you know, not just be, like, the funny guy. But people don't understand that one of his best movies, one of my favorite movies, he did in, like, 06, 07 with Don Cheadle called Rain Over Me. And it's a great, great fucking movie. And if you want to see Adam Sandler really act, you need to watch Rain Over Me. People talk about, you know, him acting in Hustle. W watch him in Rain Over Me. With Don Cheadle. Great fucking movie. Yeah, I I love Adam Sandler. Um, and he's so talented. So he's, from, he's from New Hampshire. He, it, was <laughs> funny, it was funny. He was just at, he was in New Hampshire, like, uh, when I was in Florida, you know, during the holidays. And he, you know, obviously just being Adam Sandler, you know, he went to some, like, normal-ass restaurant in New Hampshire. And... People were like Snapchatting, like, oh my, like freaking out. And you know how like Adam Sandler dresses, like he don't give no fucks. He don't have no stylist. He wears like basketball shorts with like, you know, a, you know, he doesn't match. Like he got like a like, yellow shirt. Yeah, he, he, he don't give no fucks. And, and like what? And all props to him. But like, uh, it's just, it was just so funny just seeing him just like, cause he's like, just, I, I don't want to say he's a normal guy cause he's not. I mean, you know, in terms of like just how society puts, you know, actors and celebrities and famous people on, on a pedestal. But, you know, it goes to show that, you know, 
even people like that, you know, still, you know, at least try to, you know, fit into society or be genuine because he didn't have to go to some cheap, you know, you know, you know, I don't want to say cheap, but like, you know, some normal restaurant, you know, he could have, you know, went to, you know, went anywhere, you know. So, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's cool to see, you know, when celebrities are so down to earth and, and genuine. Um, that's why, like, I really aspire to be, like, when I do make it, to be someone like Keanu Reeves um, or someone like that. Um, but, yeah. Um, David, you know, you know what's fucking crazy, bro? What's up? A couple of days ago, marked the 19th year anniversary since the college dropout came out and okay. bro i feel fucking old first of all because i was 19 years ago and i literally remember buying that album well my mom bought me it <laughs> thanks mom and you know obviously you know in my opinion it's the greatest debut freshman album by a rapper and then probably you know definitely in the top you know list of debut albums by you know by an artist of all time um but just in ha you know rap and hip-hop it's definitely the best you know debut freshman album of, of all time I, I don't really think you can argue with that i mean can you there's nothing else that there's nothing else that compared to that yeah, album I, 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 uh, the rap is out there just as good as kanye but bro, that I, album. I listen to that album to this day on repeat and, and not Me just too. like through the wire all falls down like I, I yeah, listened to the whole, whole album. album, bro. Even my one of the best songs at the the last song, Last Call. And it's so inspiring, the shit he says that, you know, he's talking about how he's wanted, trying to get the record deal and it fell through and all this shit. Like, he went on, like, this, like, four-minute, like, tangent rant, like, Kanye being Kanye before he, you know, he was, you know, the, I don't, I was going to say the Kanye he is now, but, you know, that's, that's a whole nother story. But, um, yeah, it, it's just a first of all crazy because you know i feel old as fuck the fact that i remember i remember buying that album 19 years ago but i also remember buying the eminem show in 2002 when i was only eight years old so that's fucking crazy i went to a circuit city and got the album and they don't even fucking exist i don't think anymore yeah um, they don't have those anymore yeah I, I don't think so either um but yeah it, it's been a crazy week you know we <sighs> I did, like, I believe I did 12 or 13 interviews in a six or seven day span. And honestly, I don't know if any other podcaster, radio host, radio personality, or even late, no late night talk show host has done that. Like, that, that's a lot, you know. It's a lot, you know, especially when you're interviewing multiple people in one day. People really don't understand that it's not always as easy because here's the thing, you know, like just over the past week, you know, I, a couple of days I had like two or three interviews. And, then, you know, two, two of those times I had like consecutive back to back interviews and First of all, when you when you're talking to somebody on the phone or you know meeting somebody for the first time, you know obviously you know it's a u unique experience because um, you don't know each other, and then you have to deal with when you're interviewing them, especially at least in my position right now, you know, um, I'm you know obviously on paper less successful than these people. So, uh, you know, I'm dealing with their personality when I'm interviewing them or I'm trying to get to know them and their their ego. I'm not saying they have like a, like a bad ego or a high ego or whatever it might be. But just, you know, everybody has an ego and everybody has a different type of personality. And when you're interviewing these people, or at least when I do, you know, I try and somewhat match, you know, their energy in, in you know, just kind of match match that energy so then when you have to when that interview ends you know you go back to yourself 
and then you got to do another interview and you don't know what to expect because because the person's personality and ego can be the complete opposite and then you have to match that you know energy so it's not always an easy task to interview people back to back yeah that's you're doing a you're doing a lot man uh i'm happy for you you know what i'm saying you and maddie put in so much work like it's it's crazy it's yeah. mind-blowing you guys are getting results out of it too so it's like the best part yeah thanks bro I'm, I'm trying you know this is just a start and it's just crazy the the amount of people that i've interviewed since i came back from my hiatus in october or just even since you know the start of season 14 on january 9th of this year you know i've interviewed like 15 people like i, I i've I didn't even interview 15 successful people in the 13 years. And I did that in a month. <laughs> like, what? It's only been like two months. Yeah. Out of the year. But it is ironic, you know. Uh, I think I told Maddie, I don't know if I told you, but, you know, the first, like, you know, quote unquote, big interview that I ever had was in 2011 with this producer, he goes by a different name now, but I believe his, his name, his producer name, or his real name was like Tom, uh, Cautious D. Cobb. And long story short, he wrote Just the Way You Are for Bruno Mars, which is like, you know, his biggest fucking song. He wrote the fucking song. And I got to interview him like a couple months into podcasting, which was fucking crazy. And then ironically, he produced Lupe Fiasco's most underrated song, I believe, you know, on the Lasers album and in general, Till I Get There. And when I was interviewing him, he even told me like, yeah, you can actually hear my, my vocals on the hook. And Lupe just kind of like sang over it. Um so it's it's crazy just going from like you know and obviously you know he's a very he was a I don't know if he's still producing but you know he won a Billboard award for writing the song he won an ASCAP award for writing the song um, you know obviously you can you know, those streams and royalty checks must you know must be okay too till this day um, but yeah it's just crazy from going from that to this and and this is just the start right yeah it, so it's it, it's fucking crazy like like I, I look at my phone contacts and i think i said this on facebook and and it, it, you know, I, I'm, I'm literally damn that was loud as fuck <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, it's all good. Uh, so I was looking at my phone contacts and I just start seeing, and it's not like a flex or anything, but it's just very surreal because like I have so many people that I just interviewed recently, their personal numbers. And it's weird having like, like someone that you like grew up listening to or a fan of, or even still listen to. And like love their work, and you're a fan of, and you look at your contacts, and it's their direct fucking personal number. It's a very weird experience, and I'm sure it's only going to get weirder as you know the more pe you know people as I network with and bigger people that I meet. Like, like I can't wait till the day like I got like Oprah's fucking phone number in my in my contact list, like. <laughs> Like, that would be crazy. I mean, after what I hear about uh, in the news about her, I don't know if I would want her number in my contact list, list but I, I guess I shouldn't say that. I mean, there's two sides to every story, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's wild. Anyway. So, you know, I got to say, uh, Maddie, do you remember how we were just talking about how I brought up on the previous show about Michael Jackson's like catalog estate getting sold for about 900 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I found out <laughs> that's he's selling. Well, he's not the estate is selling 50% of the, 
of the catalog for 900 million. So it's really valued at 1.8. I knew it. I knew it couldn't be that fucking low. I, I said you that. You said that. I know you did. I, I knew that. There was no way. I'm like, I'm like fucking Justin Bieber gets 200 uh, million and, 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 and uh, Michael Jackson only gets 900 million. No way. I said, make it a billion at least. Do you, do you, have, do you have your phone or computer in front of you? Can you, yeah. just, can you look up, um, look, type in, um, music catalogs, Michael Jackson owns. You're going to be fucking mind blown. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure it's, a, it's some amazing artist. Um, all that's coming up is like the, yeah, it's 50% of the music catalog. It's, it's not it's not saying uh what, what is it is it everything under sony publishing <laughs> yeah he owns like half a sony yeah, yeah i see that um, yeah, yeah he own people don't even know that yeah that's fucking crazy <laughs> um i love that guy you know i i know that he probably he might have maybe probably definitely did everything that everyone thinks he did but I, I, I don't think, I don't, my personal belief, obviously never met the man, you know, and I, and I don't want to discredit anybody that said anything, but from my perspective, you know, from what I've seen, heard, watched, researched, you know, obviously he was pushed into music and, and, and that by his father and everything and the, you know, the whole family Jackson five and all that. And, you know, he didn't have a childhood. He, he literally, you know, grew up very, very young in show business in the public eye. And he missed out on so much stuff and maybe just with his personality, you know, he just wanted to, and I know that sound, this, this might sound a little weird and it kind of does when I say it out loud, when I'm going to say it out loud, but Maybe he just wanted to hang out with like little kids to, to have that experience that he didn't get to have. And I know that sounds creepy also at the same time, but it, I don't know. It's very complex. You know, there's people that say, you know, people that were very close, like, you know, Macaulay Culkin, you know, from Home Alone. Like he's like they hung out so many times and he's and I believe he said like, you know, Michael Jackson would never have done anything like that. But then you hear stories of so I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's just ridiculousness. But anyway, like I just, I, I just looked at something, and uh, I can't believe he, he, he joked uh, in, in like 1983, and saying that he was gonna own, you know, some of the Beatles' work, and two years later, yeah, he, I, he does. He, he bought the Beatles, I believe. Beatles, Elvis. Yeah, that's why. Bill, it's, that's why it's worth. That's why it's worth. That's why they're selling it for so much because he owns all all that shit. That's so crazy. Well, his estate. But he 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 wanted to buy. Oh wow, McCart McCartney wanted to pay, buy it back. Um, yeah, from, yeah. That's crazy. Like, and it's like. And he it's said no. He said no. Yeah, he was like, "Ah, oh, fuck that." Um. Yeah, that's that's insane. Wow. Yeah. I, it's crazy. I can't, it, and, it's just, it's, what did I say? What did I fucking say? You know, like I said it on, I said it on the, I think, I believe I said it on the Christmas show or, or the day before when I was in Florida in the bathroom that, you know, I was talking about Justin Bieber selling his, ca his music catalog. I said, you can look back. Like, like I said, quote, for we are going to see a significant amount of successful artists and people selling their catalogs. And what do we see already? I mean, Bieber just sold it. Dr. Dre just sold his, um, or most of it, for a little over two hundred million. Russ got offered fifty, turned it down. You know, Michael Jackson's estate. I mean, I'm sure there's so many in the in the works. Um, I'm telling you, I, I'm like we're gonna look back and we're like, damn, JT was right. Like I'm telling you that even within the the next year or two. We're going to see so many big name, successful musicians and bands selling their entire catalog or at least, you know, half. But most of them are going to just sell the full thing. 
I guarantee you. Yeah, it's probably because, like, maybe, like, the world's ending or something, and they're just like, fuck it, I don't need it anywhere. Or it's just an easy cash out. Just kidding. I know. It's all about money. <laughs> I just... I just I just thought it would be funny to say it. Yeah, well, um, well, it wasn't. <laughs> well, fuck. I just got JT again. It's all good. I say shit that I think is going to be funny that gets no laughs. So it happens. Yeah. Sometimes, like, maybe just, like, people don't get it. Like, they just, they just don't yeah, get well, it. Well, my sense of humor is kind of weird. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. But I, I, <laughs> I can also have, like, a pretty dark sense of humor at times as well. Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> that's just how life be. Yeah. It'd be like that sometimes. I think, yeah, just my life experiences and things and how I grew up kind of, you know, inspired and, and kind of like transformed my, my sense of humor, you know, in a way, influenced it, I guess is a better word. You know, it just, it gets sticky like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just, it it just gets sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. Yeah, so uh yeah, we uh we got the Black Keys interview upcoming very soon with Patrick Carney. Uh, we have so many upcoming interviews and just know this week I am going to be reaching out to so many different people. And I know that a lot of the interviews that I've done recently have been with, you know, if you notice a pattern you know, musicians or bands that were popular maybe in the 90s or early 2000s. And first of all, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, th there's going to be a mix, like I, like I said before. It's not going to just be like musicians. I mean, there's going to be m musicians that are even popping right now. Um, but you know what I think should be? What? I, you know what I think there should be? What? There should be some sports talks because, you know what I mean? Just fly, Eagles, fly. I had to do it. Somebody dared me. Um, they're going to lose. G A G L E S Eagles. No, they're not. Oh, my God. They're yes, totally they going to play. No, they're they're going to they're gonna lose. No, don't say that. You don't say that. You don't say that. And if you see <laughs> some other. You don't say that. You don't say that. You, you, you didn't say it good. This, this is how you say it. Hey, you don't say that. You know what? That actually sucked. And I say I it know, great. That, I was just actually, too excited. Actually did suck. I was saying it really did. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but you, know, uh, you could get you could get yiked in these streets. I don't know what yiked means. I just made that up. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, well, like, like what? Like where? I was just saying jokes. Where, wait, where are you from? Are you, where are you from I Philly think, now? Yikes. I yo listen, I can I can fuck that John up quick, all right? You guys oh, you God. guys need to stop right now. All right? <laughs> but if you just won't stop it, then I guess I'll just go uh to two street <laughs> and I'll just get some heavy artillery and, and just make it happen mob style. Anyway. Okay, but anyway anyway, yeah, sports thing. That was just a joke. I was just kidding. I just interrupted just to say that about the Eagles. Go Eagles. And also Lil Buck was good. All right, now I'm done. <laughs> you good? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I told him feel, about that. You feel better now? <laughs> I do. Now that I got that out of my system. Listen. I really appreciate that you letting uh, me get that out. Of course. Listen. I just want to make sure. Are, are you good, Maddie? Listen. <laughs> Real quick. I think I need I think I need to do some of my DBT therapy or something. Yeah. I'm a little I'm a little obnoxious today. It might be because the Eagles are going to the Super Bowl. They're going to be in it and they're going to win. And you're going to be no, quiet. Not. You're not going to say that again. I, I, that. I knew you were going to say it. I told it. you that I'm in. You know that I'm intuitive. I don't. <laughs> I even said. No. To, I said. I even said. To, I said to you on Facebook. <laughs> I'm sorry to break the news. I'm because sorry to break it's, it's, it's not, it's not, No, it's not like I'm like it's something like I'm like I it's, I, I, I want. Whoever, Are you I, mad I, 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 because no, no, that the I Patriots want, aren't in there? No, I want who. Are you sure? I, I, of course, we dominated the fucking league for twenty years. I, I, I. So why can't you let us have this? We are. Why? We, we, we the Patriots aren't aren't good anymore. I mean, like we. I understand we, we, that we had our run. We we literally were the best. You know, fr 
team, like, you know, franchise in the NFL for 20 years. Yes. I grew I up. I don't even I grew, like I grew, sports. I grew, I grew up. You know how lucky I, I am that I grew up, at, you know, I'm in just Boston? So silly. You know, it's good. It's crazy. And then yeah, people, I don't even people like people sports. People like shit on Boston sports, they're just fucking no. jealous. Listen to this. So even even if the Eagles win or lose tonight, it's not going to be safe to be around South Philly because people are going to destroy the city. Either win, way, win either way, I'm going out there and I'm going to see what's good and I'm going to see how. Go it's, I listen. I don't know why the cops or or the town or the city think that greasing the poles is going to do anything. They need to stop it. We made churros out of you guys greasing the poles. Do you not realize that there was churro sales that were designed in the shape of a greased pool? Okay, pole. I can't even talk. I'm so excited. All right, get this phone away from me. Yo, I'm... you just pulled. A, you just pulled a Charlie Sheen. Who's that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ow. You know what? I'm more than two and a half men. I'm a whole three men th- today. That was hard. Yeah. Damn. That's that the only thing that you know him from? Yes. You know. And you also know, from you know how much money he was making. Per episode. No, 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 no. He did this movie that I watched one time. He looked like a a dapper young gentleman in this yeah. movie. Was, was, he, and, was he wearing that, like a biker jacket? Yes. And Ferris, I fell in love with Ferris him Bueller. then. Actually. Ferris Bueller. Yeah, that one. Bueller. 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 Um, yeah. So I'm sorry. You were saying something about the interviews, and then I interrupted you on this tangent about oh, the Eagles. Yeah, but you good. got all these dope ass interviews coming up, yep. and you're about to tell us about them. Yep, we got interviews with you know not only musicians, but again with more comedians, more actors, entrepreneurs, authors, doctors, advocates, anyone that can share an inspiring story and be able to have an intellectual conversation with, you know, we're going to have on. So it's not going to just be interviews with musicians. That's just how it's playing out right now. And there's nothing wrong with that, at least in my eyes, you know. Um, Maybe I'm a little biased because, you know, the interviews that I'm having are, it's not like I'm having with, you know, bands that I'm not a fan of. You know, so it makes it even cooler the fact that, you know, I grew up listening to these people, like as a kid, and now okay, I'm just talking, me- talking to them. You're you're just living out your childhood dream right now with all these interviews. This is just who you wanted to talk to since <laughs> you were like a little boy. It's like every every band well, you I, get. I, your I, I haven't ta- I haven't talked to Billy Joe Armstrong. Oh man, you're gonna be like you're gonna be like Dave Matthews Band check. <laughs> like it's just gonna be all of them. You'll be like no. finally, I made it. Oh snap! When I said that, we were at one, two, three, four, five on the clock. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, if, now if I can only manifest an interview with Halsey or Zoe Kravitz, if that, you don't stop, be, that, if you don't great. leave these girls alone, they're they're never gonna talk to you now. You, they're gonna they're some somebody <laughs> like someday they're gonna be like. They're going to try to give you a chance, and then someone's going to be like, yo, look at his statuses from 2023. <laughs> and and she's going to be like, she's, are you crying? No. I think you're, I thought you were. I thought no. you were crying. No, but I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe a little in the inside. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just fucking around. No, no but seriously, though, no, they're not going to the, give you the, a chance the, and no, you don't the, stop talking about them like the, that. The, the, they will appreciate my, my, my dedication. No, they're going to be like, okay, February 11th, 2023, he said he would want, what? Either one of us? <gasps> and then that's what's going to happen. They're just going to get together, and they're going to come find you, and they're just going to both, wait, okay. that could actually yeah, work like, out in what? your favor. Yeah, like, Hold on a second. Like, what? <laughs> you, you, I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, okay, this sounds like a good plan. Okay, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> All right, what else? Wait, what kind of talk show is this now? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, oh, man. Sometimes on this podcast, I have to mute myself because I'd be laughing too loud. And I'm like, nah, they don't need to hear all that. This shit's just a good time sometimes. Definitely. It's always a good time. Yeah, man. Yeah. I think uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. 
we're going to actually also on this episode, we're going to include the exclusive interview that I just did with founding drummer of Maroon 5, Ryan Dusek, um, who also just recently put out his new memoir, Harder to Breathe. So definitely enjoy that interview. I hope you guys like it. Um, yeah, it's a really great interview. And, you know, it, it goes to show you, you know, that, I mean, even, I mean, you should know this, but like even people that are famous and successful go through mental health issues and suffer from anxiety and, and depression and have breakdowns. And um, the fact that he's being vulnerable and sharing his story, um, and he's also now a therapist coach, is also really cool. Um, so definitely go check out his memoir, Harder to Breathe. Um, and it's a great interview, so I hope you guys really enjoy it. I believe it's about like 40 minutes or something like that. Um, if you are a business owner, a brand, or a company, and you're interested in advertising on this podcast, then send me an email at onairwithjt at gmail.com. That's onairwithjt at gmail.com. You can watch this. I can't even talk. You can watch the show on YouTube. Just type in on air with JT. You can listen to the show on all major streaming platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. You can follow me on Instagram at Justin Thomas Insta. Everything that I mentioned is right over at onairwithjt.com. Maddie and David, where can people follow you? You can follow me at uh, Madeline Haley Marquez on Facebook, Madeline with two N's underscore Haley on Instagram, and Lazy Eye 16 on TikTok and YouTube. And for David, you can follow him at uh, on Instagram, Nismo Chin uh, underscore 23. That's N I S M O C H I N underscore 23. And Facebook, David Chen. All right, definitely go give both of them a follow. Uh, thank you, everyone that has been showing love and that watched or listened to this episode. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. And have a great day. And motherfucking JT. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you are a business owner, brand, company, or anyone selling a product and you want to advertise on this podcast, email the show directly at onairwithjt at gmail.com. We are offering extremely low rates for a limited time. Once again, email the show at onairwithjt at gmail.com. Listen to On Air with JT on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Go to onairwithjt.com.